Welcome to Sports Music the Other Ish. I'm your co-host, Vic. I'm your co-host, Big John, a.k.a. the Black Jerry Maguire. And today we have on Mr. Darrell Walker. Uh, he is a Canadian football wide receiver for the CFL. He's currently a free agent. He was most recently a member of the Toronto Argonauts of the Canadian Football League. He was named a CFL All-Star in 2015 and 2016 and received the CFL's Most Outstanding Rookie Award in 2015. He previously attended Texas A&M University, where he played college football for the Aggies. What's up, Darrell? What's well, going no. Thank y'all for having me on here. Uh, no uh, problem. I should I call you Skywalker? Hey, whichever you choose, man. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't in uniform right now, so. You know. <laughs> hey, you know, you know when you big time when you got your, when you got a nickname like that. Yeah. Hey, man. It was, I, actually, funny thing it was, actually was given to me at my uh, at my JUCO from a couple of my uh, my teammates I got close with over there. Um, a couple guys I walked on with. It was a, just a group of us, a small group of us, made it out of like a, a bigger number that actually wanted to walk on. So we got real, real, real close. It was a couple of us from all over. Well, majority of us was from Texas, though, but a few from out of state. Gotcha. Kind of give y'all a little background. Um, Darrell is from Hillsborough, Texas. Uh, you know, the home yeah. I'm from as well. Um, he also, uh, me and him also share a birthday, June 29th. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, he got to be a real one if he got a birthday the same day as me. You know that. <laughs> you know that, man. All right, the real man, tell, tell us about um, growing up in small town Hillsboro, man. What was it like? What was the mindset uh, in, in playing football and sports? And then what, what kind of led you to go to college? Uh, and, you know, just growing up in Hillsboro, you know, as looking, looking back, as an adult now, just you realize the lack of resources you really had as far as like some of the bigger cities really have, you know, as far as having guys to come train their, their younger athletes, um, you know, because a lot of guys out here in Houston, they're getting trained and, and things like that. But so as far as in Hillsborough, you know, you, you're growing up, growing up there, I, I grew up in Hillsboro. I loved it and enjoyed it. Small town guy, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm a family person, so I enjoy being around my family. I didn't really like getting too far away until, you know, you go to college. But, uh, but uh, speaking of just growing up there, man, I, I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot of things, uh, learned how to work, um, you know, from my parents. At a, at a very young age, I was more more grass and washing cars. Really didn't have no choice, but I was making, we was making, me and my brother Darius was making money doing it, so it was always cool. <laughs> we didn't do nothing with the money but just buy Debbie cakes and, and sweets and all those things like that nonstop. But, uh, as far as sports going up in Hillsborough, it's really all I really looked up to. It's, you know, it's things that you know, everyone wants to go to the NFL, play football, and, and we all had that dream of going pro and whatever whatever it is that we want to do or whatnot. But um, that was just, for me, football, sports like that was my life. I really just gravitated towards it, you know, um, at a young age. At a young age, I just knew I just was – a young athlete running around catching footballs and just having fun. I really didn't get to play organized football till about seventh grade because we really couldn't, you know. Uh, they brought, I believe they brought Pee Wee football, Pee Wee football there my fourth grade year. Mm -hmm. Fourth grade year when we was in elementary. And at that time, we just couldn't afford it. So um, just had to, you know, dug it out until I was able to pay for the school or whatnot. So I was, when, when seventh grade hit, uh, you know, I was a little further behind than the other kids because they was able to start in fourth grade and establish themselves as far as understanding the game of football and things like that. Myself, I was kind of lost. I was just was wanted to have fun and just was a big kid. I just wanted to play. You know, just thinking it was just simple, just catch the football, run, <laughs> tackle, <laughs> things along that line, not really understanding what all goes into the game. And even more professionally, like, people don't really understand what all – what it all takes to be a professional athlete. But you know, just growing up in Hillsboro, you know, looking up to the older guys, you know, Chris Thompson, guys like that playing basketball, you know, just because that's when right around that time I was a young guy, and that's when they was, you know, going to playoffs and they had a squad just about every year. You know, they just built the new high school and things like that. So um, the new new stadium, the new arena or whatever was it was pretty amazing for Hillsboro, as you know. Um, but, yeah, man, just – so from junior high to high school, you know, just trying to learn a game and, you know what I'm saying, get my get my feel for it and things like that. I was playing running back, actually. In junior high, I was playing running back. Seventh grade, I played running back. Eighth grade, I played running back. I played running back ninth grade and, and my sophomore year. And then going into junior years when I switched over to receiver. 
Mm. So that's the crazy thing about that. Yeah. So I guess that's I guess playing running back really helped me help translate a lot over in my games while I play so physical, I suppose. But uh, so just going back, thinking about things like that. Um, I mean, just growing up in Hillsborough, I, mean, I, I really enjoyed it and loved it. Uh, still, still talk to a lot of my friends there uh, that I grew up with, Darius Spinell. You know, we 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 basically talk just about every other day, hey, roasting and high side and doing all that good stuff on each other every day. Nothing has changed. So, uh, <laughs> they call me in the middle of the night, just talking mess out of nowhere. Like, yeah, nothing has changed. But and yeah, I just I really do love where I'm from though, Hillsborough. You know, because it made me who I am. So I'm just Proud, proud to be from there. So, the real you get to you get to your um, junior senior year playing wide receiver. Wh- who or what planted that seed in your head that to go to college? Not not more or less to play football, but just who put that seed in your head or what put that seed in your head to say, you know what, I'm gonna go to college. Uh, honestly, even at that point, uh, I, I feel like all kids had that, had that the idea in their, in their head that they want to go D1 and things like that. But at that at that point in time, I didn't really necessarily have a plan or really the thought that that was going to happen. But I, I, of course, imagined it, if that makes sense. You know, um, I believe that one day it would be possible or whatever. But um, so going to junior year, it was just, I don't know. At that time, I feel like I was just focused on what was in front of me at that time, like trying to learn this and, Get it, get it where I fit in at that point because even junior year I still didn't play much. I was behind Leslie, <laughs> Leslie Hewitt. I was behind Leslie Hewitt in the slot receiver, <laughs> so I still had to, you know, learn and get a feel for the game. And still had a senior in front of me that year, so things didn't really start start to evolve until like my senior year. Even though from from freshman to sophomore year I did play well as a running back, but I was mostly freshman. And then they eliminate the freshman team, and then it was just a JV team for a little while after that. But um, so I guess I gained a lot of toughness from being a scout team running back for the varsity as well. You know how to, you know how those guys get treated. <laughs> so you, it, it's either you learn or you're gonna get banged up and abused out there. So <laughs> and the funny thing about it, I remember was specifically Leslie being on scout team and him not being too fond of wanting to be the scout team running back and things like that. But you know, I was probably one of the smallest dudes out there, but I don't know. I, I just had hard at the time and I just just get out there and just make it work. I got punished a lot, but once you get punished a bit, you learn so you you get quick on your feet. <laughs> so, you know, as, as as it started to go by, I really was not getting touched too much because I was shaking, you know, shaking. And then by the end of the year, I really didn't have much of a jersey. It just, I just put on and just be the top because I don't, you know, I just, I just had, <laughs> it just happened like that. <laughs> but it was for me learning, getting punished a lot from my own, my own classmates too, because they all got moved up sophomore year to varsity. Pretty much, Rigo Reyes, Gilberto Segura, Darius Fennell, a lot of them guys got moved up sophomore year. So it was just funny looking back at that, you know. <laughs> but like, yeah, like he was saying, so junior year and senior year, of course, I, I had thoughts to, you know, want to continue to play football. Just really didn't know the specifics of of what I wanted to do, even after graduating high school, because you know Hillsborough, you know we have. Even in high school, I still didn't know the game of football that well because every year we're still getting different coaches every year. So at that point in time, we was getting different coach changes, so we didn't really have nobody to fight for us as far as whenever recruiters came in anyway. You know what I'm saying? So that really probably hurt a lot of guys as far as getting recruited because we did have a lot of guys that could play, you know, that really had a lot of talent that was way more talented than me coming out of high school and things like that as well, you know. Wayman and Goodley running four fours and stuff like that early in high school and things like that. Like we had a lot of talent on the team. Just could have been a lot more disciplined together. Could have been a lot more well kept together as far as discipline and things like that. As far as looking back from a professional level, you know. Um, but it's high school football, so that's just how it goes. But um, I feel like that that really hindered a lot of guys the coaching changes because you really you know you weren't really able to build that relationship that a lot of coaches are able to build with their players by being around them, you know, here and there for several years instead of, oh, we got a whole new coaching coach staff this year. Going to senior year, had a whole new coaching staff. My junior year, we ran an affirmation. Going to my senior year, we ran a spread. So now it's like, yeah, dang, you know, we got to have a whole line to run spread. <laughs> we got to have a whole 
lot of that around the spread, man. But, you know, in the quarterback, you know, but uh, we was able to go into – so senior year, as you know, we went 2-8. and eight. It, it, didn't, it didn't work for us that well. You know, it was – it was tough. Senior year two and eight. My junior year, I believe we went five and five or so. But senior year we went two and eight. So coming out of senior year, it's not like I really spoke with a lot of schools and colleges as far as furthering my football career or whatever. So um somehow somewhere I just stumbled upon stumbled upon just Trinity Valley. Trinity Valley pretty much. Stumbled upon that. And just was going just was going there to go to school pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So, so you get through you get through your um, your high school career. You say you hadn't talked to a lot of people, but then you, you go to Trinity Valley. Uh, what made you What made you decide to walk on? Uh, so, pretty much. I mean, you always your mom gonna be telling you, "Oh, baby, you can do that. You can do this." You know, she always gonna be in your corner, and things like that. Your family members and stuff like that. So, you know, that's always in the back of your head. But it's just like coming from Hillsboro, then coming out of Hillsboro, not really, I say not really being as productive or not really, I guess, being as confident because you didn't really get that exposure, I suppose. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or I feel like, you know, I feel like you still got a lot of learning and things like that, I guess, too. That still hasn't, I don't know, I guess, I don't know. But so pretty much what led me to that, um, my first semester there, um, really didn't do too much, man. I, I got I got good at ping pong, dog. <laughs> I got man, really good at like ping pong, man. I, I got can, really I good at ping pong. <laughs> I got really good at ping pong, man. We had ping pong turns and stuff like that. So pretty much the first semester, man, I was just going to school, but um, I ended up going to Trinity Valley with one of my classmates. He was in theater and stuff like that. Um, so. That kind of helped me as far as someone to hang out with and things like that. So I ended up hanging out with him and his posse and his crew or whatever. And it was in theater. So they they brought to me they brought to my attention intramural football. Intramural football. So I didn't I didn't know nothing about it. They brought to my attention, hey, you wanna be on our team? Blah blah this, blah blah that. You know, um, so I was like, cool, yeah, I'll play, whatever. I don't have no cleats. So at this time I probably wore like a size eleven, but this is one of my friends, Zach Carlson, he gives me one of his he gives me a pair of his cleats, the old bits with the straps on the top, you know? yeah. <laughs> the rubber bottles. <laughs> size, I, think, I can't even remember if it was size 13 or 14. It was one of them sizes, something like that. But it was I could not fit them. I could not fit them at all. I couldn't fit them whatsoever. But I had just bought some shoes because the Pell Grant hit. And I wasn't much of a, a rapper. I wasn't much of a rapper spender with my money anyway, but I bought me one pair of shoes. The teacher that you put in them shoes, I put them inside of my inside of them Vicks just so I could have some, you know, so my feet wouldn't be sliding forward. And so, and this is true story. This <laughs> this is true story, man. So um, now now we we get we move further along. Now I got my cleats, I got them adjusted to my liking or whatever. So we start playing. You know, I'm in these Vicks. We got a little this flag. This this intramural, but it's like seven on seven with flags, flag football or whatever. So, as so now we, we start playing games, and there's several teams. We got a, there's a group, there's one group where it's a group of guys that's walking on for the football team. You know, it's a one group that's probably from the city of Athens because Trinity Valley is in Athens, and then it's probably two or three or four groups so with guys with some good talent on the teams and, and whatnot. But um, on my team, I'm literally the only black guy on my team. You know. <laughs> But that, it is what it is. With my dogs, we're going to go out here and rock. <laughs> but uh, so, but we got hard over here, too, so we're going we gonna to compete. So, and, that, and we did compete. Now, I ain't saying I didn't do a lot of the work, but we did compete. But um, so, we start, so we start playing, but we, we're actually able, actually able to keep up with some of the other guys. Now, me and our mind, a lot of the other guys are a lot more athletic than a lot of the, my teammates, but we hanging in there, you know. Um, <clears throat> So we get further along, and as as the semester go by, we now we played several games. But I remember specifically once when we played the, the guys that was walking on, you know, because by that time I got close with some of the guys, you know, just hanging out. Some were from Florida, some were from Louisiana. Just got hanging out with them, you know. You see them every day. You just start speaking and start chopping it up, and you know, you get kind of cool. Like, man, what you got going going over to the sub? The sub was the student union building where the ping pong tables are, and guys have Madden tournaments and. 
you know, all, all, all things like that. Guys being up macking and stuff like that. Just be doing all kind of stuff in there. But um, so further on from there, we're playing against the walk-on team. And these are the guys that's going to walk on for the football team at Trinity Valley, you know. Mm-hmm. So we playing them, and I remember specifically, I catch like a slant. And I catch like a slant. We, we're probably about 40, 50 yards out. I catch like a slant, boom. Come across the middle, shake one guy, boom. And I'm right, I'm, I'm running out. I think I, I get to about, I think there's another guy come up and I shake him, boom. <laughs> and now I'm just running out, riding out for a touchdown. I did this probably about three, three, three times or so. So, you know, I guess I got the guy's attention on the team. Like, man, you need to, you know, try out and walk on. You know, I was like, nah, I'm, you know, I'm good. I'm blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> that's what my head was at, at that time. Because it's, that's just what it was. Coming from Hillsborough, you see the other guys, oh, they come from 5A schools, 4A schools. You know, that's how it, that's just how it is coming from there. Like, oh, that's a bigger school. You know, they come from a bigger school. You know, I watch them on TV, the blah, 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 that. You know, that's just the thought process when you, you know, your, your horizon hadn't really been broadened because you've been sheltered in a sense. Right. <laughs> so that's how it felt, you know. I, I mean, looking back, that's how I feel like I was in a a bubble, you know. Looking back, how far my mind has expanded now, just looking back. I feel like a lot of... A lot of kids really their need, like, you know, you got guys what I'm talking about, but you don't yeah. be yeah, uh, So um, yeah, pretty yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, so so you so you decided to walk you decided to walk on. What what did you from that walk on process? I know it's tough where you walk <laughs> on, you know what I mean? Whether it's right. whether it's JUCO, D one, D two, D three, whatever. Anyway. Uh, Cause it's a lot of the competition. You know, I went to a JUCO myself uh, mm-hmm. at Ranger, and it was it was a lot of competition. It's I mean, I, I, like you say, it's it's the the four A, the five A's, uh, mm-hmm. all these other guys. Um, but at some point, when did you figure out during this process that oh damn, oh, I can compete with these dudes? Like I'm, you know, I'm I'm right. here. I, I'm I'm right here with them, no matter what, how much they got. Versus how much I didn't have, because a lot of times mm-hmm. when you go to those big schools, you take this people take this shit for granted, you know. Right, for sure. I played, I played D tackle, and there was a guy. He was every bit of six seven. He looked the part, but every time they hiked the ball, you're playing free safety. You know right. what I'm saying? As a D tackle, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't do that. So when I start seeing that, I'm like, okay, I, I'm not that bad. You know, matter right, fact, right. Matter of fact, the dude played. With, he played at ODY with my cousin, with one of my, with two of my cousins. So I, I, I didn't know him personally, but I knew of him. You know, ODY was mm-hmm. a, was a powerhouse in Fort Worth at the time. Right, for sure. So, I had a couple guys from Dallas. So, so when did you know? You know what, man? I'm, I'm better than I thought I was. I'm about to make this team. I mean, I, I would say that that semester, I would say that semester, uh, I, when I started to establish myself furthermore with just the intramural, just seeing how easy it was just to kill the guys that went to these bigger schools that's going to walk on at this school and then go home for the, and then now that the that semester is over, you know, guys, after that, I spoke to, I hung out with these guys even more, the guys that's walking on. Um, they tell me, man, you need to walk on, you need to do this, you need to do this at the third one guy from Atlanta, you need to, you need to walk on, you need to do this, da, da, da. And so now it's just, I guess that's feeling me a little bit more, giving me a little bit more confidence, like, okay, maybe I'm, I'm better than I, I expected I, I am, you know, in a sense. Not to say I never thought I was trash or anything, you get what I'm saying? But right. now it's like, okay, now the semester ends, I go home, all right? So over Christmas break, I worked at Brahms a couple years in high school and things like that. So with Christmas break, I'm going back, I'm going to work. You know what I'm saying? I'm going back, I'm going to work, flip burgers, scoop ice cream, whatever I got to do to make a little extra money, you know. Uh, never know when I might need it or whatever. But um, I'm working over Christmas break. Um, do the goal with Christmas break. Uh, obviously, you know, I, I'm around my mom, so she helped influence me with the decision even more too. Uh, like, baby, you know, I love to see you play football, da, 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 you know, so it just – sets in a little bit more after after that whole semester of, okay, maybe I should give it a shot, you know. So I come back, it's time to register for the next semester. My mom comes with me, and now I'm going to, 
you know, basically I got influenced and in talking to and now I believe in myself or whatever you want to say. Whatever the thing is, whatever it is that transpired upon. But now I'm going to enroll into uh, the workout class. You got to get into the workout class. Um, I'm going to let me rewind. So I get there with my mama. I'm going to register. We go to go. We go to register to make my schedule. And we ask who we got to talk to 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 play football or whatever. You know, we ask who do we have to talk to, who do we have to speak to. So that director is over to the head coach. And he uh, basically gives us a list, list of stuff that we need to do to proceed to after that, after speaking with him. So, yeah, we have to, okay, go and roll into the workout class. You know, you'll have it Tuesdays and Thursdays pretty much for the semester. And everyone in that class is pretty much walking on. And then from there, we'll give you guys a list of things you have to do. So, okay, I'm going to go. Now from there, now we're going to go and roll into this class. And now school starts. And now obviously I have to start reporting to class Tuesdays and Thursdays or whatnot. So now we're doing that for uh, I, don't, I don't know how long, but it's just every Tuesday and Thursday we go there, we 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 they give us a workout plan. We lift, we work out, we run. To me, this is hard to me because it's like, <laughs> I never had to really work like this. I ain't, <laughs> is this how this is? This, this is college, you know? Dang, this, these workouts are hard to me. It's, it's tough, you know? This level is tough or whatever, but I'm sore. Ah, I'm sore. I need to, you know, cold tubs or something, but um, so that, so we're doing that for, I can't remember the exact amount of months we did it for before having like a combine, we had like a combine so they could select the guys from the class, they invited the guys from the class to the combine and they selected a group of guys who obviously did well at the combine to even try out for, the, for spring ball, you know what I'm saying? So it's steps to steps to steps before you even can get to the, to try out for football. So with that being said, so now you got to, but obviously you can't be in that class slacking because they see that as well. You know what I'm saying? You can't be in, in the workout class not look like you, looking like you not going hard because who don't want somebody on their team that's, I got you in the fourth quarter, I can't trust you. You know, like, yeah. so you really got to really put in a great effort to really make sure you put in a great deal of work because, for one, you're not on the team yet. And you're looking to make a team, you know? So you have to make a a better impression than guys that's on scholarship, even though they're not even in this class. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This is strictly just guys walking on. That's it. Strictly guys trying to get a chance, you know? So with that being said, a couple of months go by, they select a, a – well, everyone in the class can go to the combine. but So everyone in the class is invited to the combine. Um, but then they also allow guys that's from outside of the workout class to pay to come to the combine to try out too, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. They just make, I mean, obviously they have to be enrolled in the school too, but mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> try to make whatever money they can, I suppose. But <laughs> so now that it's the day of the, <laughs> you know how they go. <laughs> you go. <laughs> don't get that money. <laughs> you take buses everywhere, baby. <laughs> <And I was, laughs> but, um, so long story short, but uh, uh, where was I going? Okay. Yeah, I lost my train of thought. What get, the last thing I said? You get to you get to the comp you get to the combine, okay. and then you make it you make it right mm -hmm. to to actual walk on to the team. Right. Okay. So now that now that we're at the combine, it's 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 a good it's a good group of guys out there who's really trying to walk on at least. It's at least over fifty, probably fifty plus guys out here that are that's really participating in this, uh, this this combine. So they put us through, obviously, the, the random, the normal drill, the 40, the shuttle, you know, the vertical, broad jump, the, the normal testing drills. And then from there, we went on to do, obviously, if I'm a receiver, I, I go over to do drills, receiver drills, and then I'm going to do routes. And then from there, I proceed to um, routes against the deep one-on-ones against DBs and things like that, which is where you really make your money, which is where you really make noise, and you really get to – separate yourself I feel like in sports because now it shows like okay um this guy can do a little something he can he can get in and out of his routes he can catch the ball in contact this is at the third so um which I, I've always been able to like I told you I've 
I learned I was getting hit a lot in high school, so I had to learn how to, you know, <laughs> do you know do what I had. And then it also goes back to senior year when we had to learn the spread offense. So we had to learn how to run routes a little bit more. Uh, we had I had Coach Grofo. It was a, co- a lot of coaches we had that really helped us transcend in a way as far as run route ability. You know, but I always been able to really stop on a dime and do certain things like that in a way. Uh, and then I always been because I played running back. I feel like that's why I always been pretty hard to tackle or whatever. I always have been a yak player. So all these things I'm looking back, I'm like, dang, that's what really you know helped with my game later on in life. Mm-hmm. Not even realizing in that time what it's really gonna do. Um, but obviously with one on ones and things like that, you can't tell how physical guys are because when the pass come on, that's what that's what the action really at. Because a lot of guys get real timid, start tiptoeing when they run across that middle. Um, and I feel like I just never been a guy to do that. I don't know, but I just set myself up. I always seen football as angles, so. I just set myself up and try to if I take the ball, I'm gonna cut off the angle and things like that. But mm-hmm. so um, going into the combine, right after the combine, now they select a group of guys. Um, now they select a group of guys to start. So usually before the spring ball, they always have like two weeks or three weeks of where we're gonna get you guys up at five o'clock. 5.45, 5.30, and we're going to go work out for two hours in the morning. <laughs> you know how that goes. So from the combine, now it's on to that. <laughs> so from the combine, it's on to that. After they select, I can't remember the the number of guys they select to actually come to the, I'm going to say, the boot camp for two weeks. The two-week boot camp is always right around spring break. It's always right around spring break. Usually you might go two weeks before spring break. And then they want to get you a week after spring break to make sure you get back right because a lot of guys like to, excuse me, obviously turn up and do their thing, you know, over spring break in college or whatever. Um, so now, now we we moving from I progress from the workout class, the combine. Now we have boot camp for two or three weeks. Oh crap! What happened? Can I still see me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we have. Uh, Boot camp for two to three weeks. At, I believe the time, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the time was 5.45. You have to be there ready at 5.45. If you late, you're getting punished. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts. Everything is real strict. No games being played whatsoever on anyone. It's, it's just, it's, it's different. It's just, it was just, it's a whole different mindset now, like, Guys, this is all new to me, so it's like it's a little bit of a shock in a ways, but I just know I gotta keep going and keep. You know, it's it's new, but I'm gonna just continue to attack it or whatever. You know, I know I gotta attack it. I'm just gonna attack it. Keep walking right into it or whatever. But um, from there, so two to three weeks, they train us from 5:45 to about 7:45, maybe 6:30. And we're doing pretty much, pretty much, we're doing mat drills. We're doing, we're doing mat drill, just all kind of drills. We're inside a gym for one, because it's, uh, we're it's early in the morning, so we need lights and things like that. They don't want to put us on the football field because I practice field didn't have lights at the time. But we're in the gym. We have we're doing mat drills, just a whole bunch of different, all kind of drills. Whatever they really want to throw at us is what they're doing for the whole hour, whole two hours, whole hour forty five to two hours is what we're doing. It's exhausting, just exhausting. They're just trying to burn you out, kill you, make you make you quit pretty much. But after we do that, at the end of every one, we either run 10 30s or 30 10s. Perfect, though. So they, they, done, they done abused us and put us through that work for an hour, 45 minutes to two hours. Well, you can't, if you mess up, like it's like it was one coach we had named Coach Reed. If you mess up in this drill, you just go get your feet hot. And you just gonna be dropping them things hot all day. <laughs> and it just be funny because you know, some coaches you remember specifically on how they say stuff. You know, <laughs> get your fucking feet hot. Like, you know, like that's how he, he cussing like get your fucking feet hot. Like, you know what? Since you guys got so much it's hysterical though. Since you guys got so much energy, get your fucking feet hot. Just be <laughs> just be <laughs> Like it's like it's a show, but it's just so funny because you remember specifically 
and there were moments where you you exhausted for one and tired and sweating and, <laughs> and you better not bend over, you know. But um, it's funny looking back because that's what I remember. Like you better not be messing up any of your drills or you're gonna have a price to pay. But like I was saying, at the end of every one, we capped it off with ten perfect thirty or thirty perfect tens. So they'll divide the groups up within three three sectors. It'll be it would be the skill, the big skill, and the big guys, pretty much, the O-line and D-line. So now in your group, you can't false start, can't be off size, <laughs> you can't flinch before they say go. You better run always. You better not stop at the line. You better run a couple steps past it because if not, it don't count, and they, they all have to be perfect. So, you know, that, that causes a lot of frustration among a lot of the guys. If some guys are slacking and being lazy, you know, but you definitely don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, but especially as uh, trying to walk on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, especially so, as trying to walk on, man. Especially as trying to walk on, man. You already got a chip on your shoulder. You already got a chip on your shoulder. So, you walk on, you make the team, and then – Next thing you know, you talking to Texas A&M. Right. What is, what, how, how does that how does that happen? It was I mean, did you just show out so good so so good during your season? Uh, did you did um, they came out and recruit you out at uh, Trinity Valley? Well, pretty much what happened. I had to. I went through the first year. The first year I went through, I played, but I was I was still behind a guy for about half of the season until uh, things start happening. And I kind of I separated. And then the, the second half of the season, I was a starter at, at wide out. And I'll start doing my thing. So going to the spring, I'm playing pretty much everything I know, every position. You know, I, I've, I've, I've adjusted. And and now I know, you know, I, I, I know how to – I know the game a lot more. I know how to play this position, this position. This, you can put me at any wide receiver position and I'll succeed. So I used that that spring for my ability. And my first spring at the Texas Tech was interested in looking at me. Um, but I still had another year left as well. Because coming out of Hillsborough, with the coaching change, they didn't know nothing about the clearinghouse or anything along the lines, you know. Um, so I still have another year left um, that I still have to um, get done at, at Trinity Valley or whatever. Um, so that, that, that after I go through a season, I'm going to the spring. Um, I, I, I dominate, have a great spring, um, and now we're going to that fall semester. I really did. I, I had a great year. I had a, I had a, I put up some pretty decent numbers with what we had. I wasn't really getting, I wasn't really receiving the ball too much throughout the games. I was just working on what I got, honestly, and the numbers just added up. You know, uh, I probably was getting two or three catches a game, but I'm getting yak, doing things like that, um, catch a screen, take it to the crib, um, Certain things like that. The next thing you know, season over with. Um, we go to the bowl game. Um, uh, we end up losing in the bowl game, but I get uh, most valuable, most valuable player, most offensively most val- most valuable player on offense. So they give me a trophy and things like that. And you know, I bit now now I'm starting to get recognized and things like that. Towards the end of this year, what year is it? It's 2011. Towards the end of 2011, I'm getting letters from teams like that and now I'm setting up visits. Now I'm setting up visits. Okay, now I'm setting up visits. Okay, my first visit, um, uh, my first visit, I'm going to Arkansas State. I'm going to Arkansas State. They're the Red Wolves. They used to be the Indians or something like that, but then they switched over to the Red Wolves because they had a little situation with, with, with that. Um, but the Red Wolves and then that, then, then, so you get five visits. You get five visits. So I set one up with Arkansas State which was my first one. And then I had Middle Tennessee as my second one. And then my third visit was, I went on, my third visit was, I believe, Kansas or UTSA. I just, UTSA was their first year having a football program this year. Well, they was about to have their first year going into that following year. Um, and then, so basically I went Arkansas State, Middle Tennessee, Kansas, and UTSA. Those are the visits that I went on, you know. So now fast forward to signing day, 
we fast forward to signing day now, and uh, I haven't signed yet. I haven't signed yet. Um, I haven't signed yet. I haven't signed my letter of intent. I'm seriously thinking about signing to Kansas, but come to find out, the guy that's recruiting me there, everyone gets fired. They hired Charlie Weiss. They hired Charlie Weiss to Kansas. So now I'm just in thought in question, like, dang, what should I do? The guys that's recruited me, not even there no more, you know? So yeah. that's the guy who I built the relationship with. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the guy who drove all the way down here, who helped me with the clearing house, you know? That's the guy who came down here, helped me with the clearing house, and make sure I was even eligible to go play D1 anywhere I wanted to next year. You know, this is the guy who spent his time to help me do this. So you build a yeah. level of respect for someone who helps you do that. Yeah. So um, I was very, you know, I uh, had a love for the guy because, you know, he went out his way to obviously come. It's, it's benefits him in a way too, but a lot of coaches not are, aren't about to come down there and literally walk you through this and help you do it right there inside the building where you're playing and have meetings at every day, you know. So now I'm just, I'm just thinking like, dang, on Sunday that day, I, Coach Kevin, something calls me, you know, um, and – pretty much offers me, pretty much asks me, say, how would you like to come play for us? And things like that. And it really didn't take me no time at all. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave Texas anyway. Well, for one, let me rewind. So I had my coach from my Duco call me to tell me pretty much, don't sign my letter of intent because some more news has came in. You get, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm even more hesitant to signing this letter of intent for Kansas. Need I remind you, I'm from Texas. I don't want to go to the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh out. We don't, we don't want to go up to Kansas. Oh, it's snow. It's snow up there. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to do that, man. They play football in the snow. No, man. You know, that's just your mindset at the time. 1920, like, dang, they, I already done played the one cold game in Kansas at Majuco, and I'm dating to die. So it's like. You start thinking about them elements or whatever. But long story short, Coach Kevin Sumner called me and he's, hey, how would you like to come play for me? And I was trying to keep it cool and play it cool, but, you know, trying to play it cool. But it was just like, man, I, was, yeah, I love it, man. I just enjoy it because I'm feeling like I, I can't go to the cold. I don't want to leave Texas. I don't want to be too far <laughs> home. All those, all those things are starting to hit me, you know, as I start to process the whole situation. But now it's just like, Man, I'm going to Texas A&M now. Like, they're going to send a letter of intent over. I'm going to Texas, Texas A&M. Like, I can't believe it. It's crazy. Um, about to be in the show. To, yeah, just like – And the crazy, thing, <laughs> the crazy thing about it, that past football season, before I even signed for that past football season, I was watching them on – we was watching them on TV in the cafeteria. I remember specifically they was playing the Arkansas Razorbacks in Cotton Bowl in, 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 in Texas State, in Cowboy Stadium. And it's playing them there. It was 2011, and I was just watching the guys, and like, man, I got some boys on it that's cold. You know, you just watching the game. You you a fan? You know, it's, it's Texas A and M in Arkansas playing TV on on at Cowboy Stadium. You know, so it's just like it's it's very entertaining. And then next thing you know, like, hey, I'm signed. I'm gonna be out there too. You know, I'm gonna be. I'm about to be out there too. I'm about to be playing with these boys on national television. Small town kid about to be doing this. You know, so it's just like. It's just something really to just be like, it just puts you in the awe, like, awe and wow, like, wow, I'm really here, you know? So you, you, go from, you go from playing with, you go from playing with a few people in the stands to, like, I know it got to be at least 80,000 yeah. people in the yeah, stands. Man. 87, 88,000, man. It, mm. it, it'd be crazy, man. Like, you walk out that thing. Like, the first time I played, I was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. Well, if man was alive every game, you know. So, so you, so Darrell, you get you get to A and M, and you got Johnny Football out there, Johnny Manziel. See, that's like, the thing, well, though. When I got there, Johnny Football, who is Johnny Football? Johnny, who is that? <laughs> when I got there, nobody is just Johnny Manziel. It's he not even. They thinking that Jabil Shower is about to be the starter here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I got there that spring, so. We went, when I got there that spring, Coach Summon just got there. So now we got to install a whole new offense. Everybody, you know, up for grabs and whatnot, you know. So going forward, um, going forward, it's, 
it's, it's battle. You know, it's battle time. Obviously, they got guys that's been there. They got three year starters. So certain guys, you know, that probably gonna play. You know, they've been even three year starters are already under uh, Coach Sherman, the prior his head coach. Um, so now it's it's a lot of so long story short, it's a lot of guys battling that spring. Um, um, Mike Evans started coming to play. You know, boy Mike started to evolve, started coming to play. Johnny started to evolve, started to come into play. Um, you just see a lot of guys start to flourish. I, I, I sprained my ankle that spring, so that kind of hurt me a, a, a lot as far as production. You know, it really hurt me a lot as far as production. So it said me back a little bit, but came in time for spring game. I still played pretty well, but my ankle was still, it was still hurt. It was still hurt. I had to have it wrapped in. Every time I got tapped and stuff like that, I just had to go down because it was still I was pretty banged up, things like that. But um, now going into that 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 summer where now you report for camp and things like that, I play I play excellent. Like I play excellent. Every scrimmage we had, when I touched the ball, I, I scored a touchdown. Probably rolled out about 30, 40 yards. Really, really start to excel, but still they had. Now it's already guys are under spots and stuff like that. This summer camp time, pretty much going to the season. They got Mike at. Now going to the season, going into that season, I'm pretty much second string behind uh, Mike Evans. So you guys know how that's gonna go. That boy, his first year, that was a plus yard receiver. Um, my first year there, my, that my first year there, which is my junior year. That first year, I would just really go in. I was best play special team a lot that year, and I just really subbed in. I get tired, I run in for a few reps in the game or whatever, and that's just how it worked. That's just how it was my first year. So I didn't really get to do – I didn't really have too much production that year. It was more of a – just play a role. We're going to play the role and work our way up until earn them stripes. We're going to earn them yeah. stripes pretty so, much. Um, so you, you think um, – I mean to catch you all in, but I just want to – I kind of want to catch you before work. you move on. Um, you say you, you – you, coming from Trinity Valley, everything you had to go – coming from Hillsboro, Trinity Valley, all everything you went through – to get to a and you know what I mean? Being able to, you know, obviously you, obviously you, you will athlete, you want to play. You're competitive, right, you want sure. to play. Yeah, you probably yeah, feel right. like, you know, I'm behind him, you know, move me to the other side or something. But how did all those things prepare you for that situation to still be patient in what you was doing? Because a lot of like, I'm an agent in basketball. So a lot of guys lose their patience. And here I am, I'm telling them, hey, man, you know what? You did good last year, but you ain't doing enough. Right. Because you're going to have – if you're trying to go overseas, you got you got ex-NBA guys. You got all the, all the guys that's coming out of the top colleges is not going to the league. Right. You got the guys that was second round. They got cut from the teams. There's a, there's a, there's a pecking order in this situation. And a lot of, a lot, I see a lot of guys lose their patience in the process. I think I think you know Joe L. B. said it best, man. You gotta trust the process. Not only do you gotta trust it, you gotta enjoy the process. So how were you able to take all those experiences and and help you endure that process of AM that one year before you got your before you got to do your thing? I mean, man, really honestly I learned a lot that that entire year because I can tell you that 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 my my first year there, pretty much the entire year, Mike was hurt. His hamstring was hurt, so he didn't practice. So I took all the reps with the ones. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking all the reps with the. I'm taking all the reps with the ones from Monday to Wednesday and Thursday, just the perfect thirty plays or whatever. So you know, I really had to find a. You know what I'm saying? Really had to dig deep, find myself, work on. I mean, but but you around a lot of guys who are older who you know they teach you certain things, work on your craft, certain things like that. So I just. Honed in, worked on my craft, and just tried to control what I could. You learn to try to control what you can. Like, it's a lot of things you can't. Because all you can do is hope to get the coach respect, hope they trust you enough to put you out there. But you obviously have to earn their trust with things like that. Um, but, man, I, I, it was just – it was it was a tough situation. I can't say that. Some days I wasn't frustrated more than others. I can't say that. But I just kept pushing forward and just kept – I just love football, man. You know, I love football at that time, man. It was still, it, it's, it was my life. As I got older now, I realized it's just part of my livelihood. But at that point in time, it's it, it's my life, so it's like I have to make everything work. I have to do this and that third, you know. 
uh, because we're growing up thinking that that's the sports are the only way. You know, the narrative is very short. But um, absolutely. But um, anyway, so like I was saying, that's living my life. So it's like, man, I'm gonna make this work. You know, we're gonna make this work. But uh, not to say still gonna make it work. But I'm just saying, like back then, the mindset was just a little bit different. Yeah. So it's like found a way to make it be patient, make it short. I really did go through a lot of hardships at a and um, A lot of times where you obviously, like you were saying, you're, you're competitive, so you feel like, I could do that. I could do what he's doing and, and be better, you know. But you learn that it's like, you got to work your turn, with your, you know, you got to work your turn. Change, and, yeah. yeah, you got to, just got to be patient and grow that patience to Whenever you get that opportunity, whenever your opportunity comes, just make the most of it. That's it, really. Be patient enough till your opportunity comes, and then whenever it comes, hit the ground running every time. That's it. So yeah. you get to – yo, you, so your junior year pass up, going into your senior year, what's the mindset? I'm starting. I'm, I'm, I'm balling. What's the mindset? Going so, so going into junior year, so <laughs> it's so funny, though, because every time I – do something good is like a roadblock or something hit me every time. So going to junior year, like I told you, uh, I, I mean, going to senior year, the junior year just ended. So it's still my junior year, but it's the spring semester. So still the spring semester, my bad. Um, no, I guess, I guess, yeah, it's my senior year because I, I transferred to junior year. Sorry. But uh, after the junior year, going to spring ball, the senior that was over there at the other side, he left. He was a four-year starter. He left. So now they have a red shirt freshman over there, and they still have me behind my kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm wondering what's going on. You know, I'm wondering what's going on. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> so after that, we just had Coach Kingsbury and that coach staff. We just had pretty much all just all left pretty much. Well, offensive coordinator Coach Kingsbury left him with the Texas Tech. And he's the head coach over there. So now we don't have the office coordinator. So we bump down. We want to run that coach up to be the office coordinator. So I go have a conversation with him. And I just ask him, like, what's going on, you know? Couldn't really give me an answer for real, but. No, you never um, do, man. <clears throat> couldn't really give me an answer. Well, he did, but I don't want to put him on the spot. <laughs> yeah. couldn't, really give me, couldn't really give me the, the answer that was appropriate. But. With that being said, God always find a way in a sense because the red shirt freshman over that was over there, which my receiver coach loved me. He wanted to put me over there, but obviously it is not his call sometimes, you know. Which he not to say he wasn't he was one of the hardest coaches that I ever had that was on me because he was I understand why now, but he used to ride me so hard when I was there, I could do something that someone else did and it wasn't good enough, you know. My coach might just did that. It wasn't good enough, but going to that spring, the 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 the, the red shirt freshman, you know, start having off the field issues, you know. So now, which they already moved me over, so, but now because I, I don't have no off the field issues, or I'm not I'm I'm not a problem, you know, as far as giving the coaches any type of problems off the field or even on the field or anything like that. So. That, that helps me in a sense. But I also know what I'm doing out there, come to work. I'm not late to workouts. You know, I'm not missing these things because I'm showing up to class. All these things come into play because guys who don't show up to class, now you got extra punishment because they have class checkers and things like that. Oh, you late to work out, extra punishment. There's some guys who just, hey, you on there again today? <laughs> but um, so – Thankfully, it all just fell in two, and now I'm in spring, and now I'm, I'm, I'm getting my feet going underneath me, and now I'm executing them after having a good time, making plays, I'm confident in myself, I'm learning the playbook. I, I really have adjusted well this spring. I'm having great practices every day. Every time we have a scrimmage, I'm making noise, and I'm, I'm, I'm playing, I'm, I'm just playing confident and believing in my abilities and all that. And then come time for spring, we had a spring game, that the spring game that year was televised on TV, but we only played against the defense. Obviously, it's just maroon and white game, and so now I'm coming to which, which I never really 
not just one on one stuff like that. I never really would just be losing and stuff like that. But um, it's always different when you get into the game when it's eleven on eleven. But that spring, I I really just had an excellent spring, hands down. It, uh, we always pot each other off drops and stuff like that. Don't think I had too many drops that year or well, that spring. So everything just started to come into that spring. Like the hard work was starting to pay off and starting to, you know, I was starting to catch my flow of the game and think all, and everything. Gotcha. So that senior year, you, you ball. And now. Even, even senior year, man, like. More obstacles. What happened? What happened? It, more obstacles, man. It's like every time, more obstacles. So, going into the senior year, have a good summer. They bring in guys. We got a guy named Jaquay Williams. We got a guy. You know, they got the guys that they like, they, that they recruited, too. Mm-hmm. Top recruit guys. So, now you got to battle against them guys, too. Yeah. You understand? So, now, even though it's, it's my spot, but I still have to battle against a young guy behind me, in a way, who... I'm sharing time with in a way still at, at the beginning of the season. We play Alabama. They took me out at the 30, throw him a go ball. It get picked off, you know, little things like that. Like, I'm still having to earn. Like, I'm still having to, you know, it never ends. It never ends. You're still having to earn it every day. Every yeah. day you have to work for it. But so going through all that, I really learned a lot. So with that being said, I'm, I'm just getting more comfortable. It's just getting me stronger and more comfortable and, making me go harder to take advantage of every opportunity. So now I'm really starting to excel after about game six. Now Johnny really starting to use me. I'm I'm third down conversion guy or whatever. You know, every third down we in situation, he throw it to me. Um, for the first six games, Mike was killing and balling. But at, at a certain point, they had to, which he still was continuing to ball that season. But for some reason, Mike, I mean, Johnny would throw it to me on third downs and things like that. And I would convert it, uh, miss, make, make God miss, convert it or whatever. Um, so my second half of the season was was really the best part of my season. Or it was the better half of my season because the first six games I really didn't have too much production. Yeah. And then we get to the and then we get now the first season over and we get to the bowl game and I have a great a great bowl game. Great bowl game. I think I put up a hundred plus. I came in my many catches and like Johnny football was last touchdown as well. Like it was it was a. That was one hell of a game because we came back. It was behind a, a great deficit at halftime. I believe. So, so you get through this. You get through this this senior season, uh, bowl game, everything. Mm-hmm. You balling out. NFL teams are already starting to kind of come around and, 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 and sniff around the campus and just kind of just kind of see what 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 Darrell Walker is about. Oh uh, well. After that, um, so I signed with my agent. Um, now that that next semester is just on the training, really. Mm-hmm. It's it's just on the training. Uh, you have a couple of scouts and stuff come throughout that se- that season, but I didn't really talk to anyone specifically um, until right around pro day and stuff like that, um, and things like that. So now I'm just training, getting ready for pro day, and now pro day, uh, I train, worked out, got ready for pro day. Pro day is here. We go do our testing. Same drills, you know, same drills you do the 40, the, you do bench press, you do uh, shuttle, you do even a long shuttle, and then one-on-ones, rocks on air. Not one-on-ones, but rocks on air, sorry. Um, and at my pro day, we actually had a scout throw, throw for us on pro day because Johnny didn't do pro day. Yeah. yeah Johnny didn't do pro day. He ended up scheduling a pro day later on. Um but um, yeah, so now, now it's after the pro, after the pro day. Now I'm starting. Now I'm starting to have some interest. Oh, my agent telling me these teams are interested. This, this team, this team, this team. Um, can't remember all the teams because a lot of guys just be they're interested, but they don't move further on. You know. Um, right, right, right. Um, yeah, but um, so now after that, like I was saying, top of to. My agent been talking to teams, and teams will reach out to you, ask for your information. But uh, that semester, I didn't, I didn't get scheduled. I didn't get flew out to have workouts with any teams. Um, I did, however, uh, work out with Johnny, um, run routes for Johnny when the Vikings came and worked them out at the at the facility. So that was a little exposure. So they kind of like they kind of 
grasped, I kind of grasped her attention in a way. Um, I think it was me and Mike, I believe, who ran routes. Um, so furthermore, there then it just was waiting, wait time until the draft came, pretty much. Yeah. How did you, uh, how did you end up picking your agent? Uh, I picked my agent based off, well, so the agent set up, they had to go through the school and things like that to set up a meeting. So I had a meeting with about probably, I believe, four or five different agents or so. But I went with my agent because it was one of my teammates' agents who I played with the year prior. And uh, he was in Seattle that year. So, you know, and a couple, couple other guys that signed with him spoke very highly on him. So. That's pretty much how I went with him, but I met him through the school's meeting because they had to set up the proper ways to set it up through the school to the right, parents right. or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. So you get you you go you, draft time come, you don't get drafted. You get signed by Tennessee, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go to Tennessee, you pl you do uh what, you train out there in Tennessee, and uh you end up you're not you didn't make the team, right? No, I didn't. Okay, so at, at this point, then you go to um, then you go to the CFL. You go to uh, play the football league. Oh, no, you don't. You don't go. To, what, what happened after Tennessee? <laughs> so after Tennessee, I go to the FXFL. Oh, okay. Fall experimental fall league. Yeah, so I go there for just a, about a month because we only played two or three games, but it's just get a little more exposure, make a little money, you know, things like that. So that's only lasts about a month. It still owe me a check to this day for one. Uh. <laughs> it's the old everyone a check to this day. So that's the crazy thing. But so now now after that's this is twenty fourteen. So now twenty fourteen ends, we're going to January. My agent brought to my attention the CFL. He brought to, he brought brings to my attention the CFL. Oh Da, 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 da. They have the workouts coming up in coming up in January or February. I believe it was early January. And now he's telling me this. I haven't been doing too much. I've been at home just chilling, hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> hanging out because I just came from playing uh, a month worth of football, you know, after just coming from just camping all that in Tennessee. Then a week after that, a week or two after that, going to the going to Nebraska for the FXFL. And now 2014 ends, and now I have a workout in January, which now I dropped to Dallas. The workout was at – it's basically a tryout. So you basically, it's basically a tryout, but it's a workout in a way too because obviously they work you out. But it's basically a tryout because guys have to pay. <laughs> you get yeah. what I'm saying? You get what I'm But it's a workout. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so now my, my agent, he tells me – he tells us on this date, okay, I'll get your hotel so you can stay the night, you can get rested because I'm in Killeen at this time. So, obviously, two and a half hour drive and then working out for several hours, that's, you know, that would be exhausting if you're driving before. So, I get there that night, the night before. We get up there. Uh, I get up there around eight or so, register, do all that. My agent gave me the money because you had to pay. Like I told you, you had to pay to actually do the workout. But I mean the tryout, but it's a workout. Yeah, but <laughs> it's a big business, right there, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to tell you, but yeah, I'm trying to tell you that it makes some good money off of that, man. I'm telling you for real. I bet it was, I bet it was been in it for a while. It, it was crowded out there, bro. It was crowded. So it, it was at least fifty plus people out there, and they have these all. They had they had these multiple times a year all over the state, and then all over the country too, different teams and things like that. So now I'm at this workout, and they make you do – you got to do all the testing. Um, but, God, you do all the testing, but I fast forward to one-on-one, one-on-ones. Uh, um, and I'm trying to learn the, the feel for the game because it's a little bit different. You got to have a little – sometimes you have to waggle and just the flow of the game a little bit different than just regular American football. For one, CFL is 12-on-12. We're not doing all that, but it's just the flow of the game is different because now you can get – they wave you to go. The quarterbacks wave you like this. They wave you to go. and Kind of like arena football in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're doing one-on-ones, and I'm having a good day out here. I'm having a good day. 
do talk mess, so I talk my mess back. And Coach Jones, who's the head coach of Edmonton Eskimos at that time, that's what he liked and enjoyed. So, <laughs> but every time I went out there, I, I just, I was, luckily I had a couple guys that I knew for my Juco, and one of my quarterbacks for my Juco was there. So that, that kind of helped me as well, the little chemistry thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But it still had been a while since I had been around him because obviously I left my Juco and went to AM and stuff like that. But and he's a lefty. So, but I, I will always come run wrestling with him here and there every once in a while. So it, it really helped that I didn't expect him to be there, but it, it all played out like that. So obviously I'm like, hey, I'm going to go with you because <laughs> I don't want to get up there with one of these quarterbacks. I don't know how they're going to throw when they. they they, they can't throw. Majority of them cannot throw, you know. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to kill a guy on a route when you kind of impress them, make a, a, you know, make a point out there or impress the coaches and things like that. And then the quarterback throw it and he's going to throw it in the guy's picket or something like yeah. Regardless, it still got picked. Yeah. Um, so it defeats everything you just did. Um, but I remember specifically that happened. That underthrew me. So I had to come back and I reached over a guy and I caught it. And he, like, kind of scratched my, like, caught me, but I got it, and I still got loose and ran and scored. It was 30 yards away, but I still ran and scored a touchdown just to prove a point because he talked a mess. I'm going to go ahead and put you in the casket now if you're going to talk that trash. But, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to put you in the casket and go talk that trash. And so my homeboy, like I told you, my homeboy who was a quarterback, his parents and stuff was in the stands and all that. So they always, he wanted them. Hey, beast mode, baby. Hey, he gonna stand up and be proud regardless if he know you, you know. So yeah. they show love. So they from yeah. Dallas, you know, real he real hood that like, you know. Yeah. yeah. Real OG, put it like that. So yeah. um he's like, Well, I see you out there beast mode, baby. Like he every time at beast mode, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so that but that's what he be like when you just act up and show out, that's what he called you. But he's been saying that for a long time. But um anyway, so I just I had a good day. The workout, the tryout went well. After that, they, 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 so out of all the 50 guys they brought up, probably about eight people. So just imagine how much money they made off them other people. Yeah, <laughs> oh, absolutely. So they talking to us, oh, yeah, we're going to be in touch. We got you guys' information. This and that's the third. Cool. Now we this person leave. My agent tells me, say, hey, they want to sign you to a contract. So from that contract, I'm still waiting because I'm still – Hey, I'm going to wait for the NFL, you know. I don't like to see what shakes from the NFL. So a little time goes by, and then certain events happen, and I'm just like, forget it. I'm just going to go sign the contract. And now rookie minicamp is coming up. They sent us to Vero Beach, Florida. We go to rookie minicamp, and it's a three-day event. It's just like a rookie – it's just like a minicamp in the NFL, three-day event. So now we get there. The day before we practice – it's pra not the day before we practice, but the day of – the practice, the first practice that we have with helmets and all that stuff like that. We do all the testing, the 40, the <laughs> not the 40, they changed it to the 10, but we did all the testing, the 10, the shuttles, the everything before, before a two-hour practice now. <laughs> so we do that before a two-hour practice. Then we take a five-minute break and then, and then have another hour and a half practice five minute break water break <laughs> so when i tell you they worked the mess out of us there they worked the mess out of us there, but you know you got to understand the game feel for the game a little bit more you learn the wild a little bit you really start to see why they, they they really throw a lot at you like because they want to see what you can they want to see you know pressure bus pipes so they want to see how fast you can learn under pressure. Oh, because every time we, because every time we practice, every day they change my position at receiver. Like y'all gave me a lot of time to learn the playbook. <laughs> yeah, you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. every day I change my. Oh, you're playing. Oh, we didn't tell you, but we're telling you now that you're playing this position today. You get what I'm saying? Y'all not I'm telling me five minutes before practice. Like that's how they do you though. But that's but that's how they that's how they would do you. But you just have to be studying and. Understand when you're looking at that playbook, you gotta learn all that. Yeah, you know, but it's it's very complicated when you still when you're trying to learn all that and you still trying to learn how y'all play the game. Right, the game is different. 
But then I got to learn, oh, it's 12 on 12. Then I got to learn, y'all got an extra gone defense. Then the coverage is a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? So it'll take you a little while to adjust and learn it regardless. Just because I haven't watched this game like a lot of these guys. I haven't sat here and studied the game before I got here. I just showed up for real. <laughs> I just showed up. <laughs> it's football. <laughs> <laughs> I just showed up this football, but I ended up doing pretty well uh, through the whole process. Which I'm thinking when I'm going at that, it's the whole team anyway. But it's really just guys they trying to try out as you know who's going to be in the rookie season, um, going into the rookie season who they want to decipher who they want out of all these guys to even take that or even to invite. Like I say, but um, now from there, okay, I get invited to the fall camp. Okay, cool. Invite to the fall camp. We get there. Um, we get there. At this point in time, we can't be in to ask the pressure on our field because this is the year they have the people up. So now we have to be outside of the city because they have the soccer people cup and they're letting, I think it's the women who was playing, but they're lending the stadiums out to them and stuff like that. So now you got these guys trying out for this team, not even being able to see the city. <laughs> not even been able to be in the city. So they're trying out for a team. They don't even get to experience what the city like or none of that. So it's kind of devastating. But um, now we're at a remote location outside the city. It's about west of the city or so. Um, we start practicing. Dang, when we got there, it was June. It was early June. And it was when I got there, it was 30 degrees, man. <laughs> Nah, nah. I was like, man, they gotta be playing with me. Why well, can't I see my breath right now? <laughs> hey, so you, 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 you bypass Kansas for the snow and end, still end up in the That's snow. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. In this summer, but it, at this point, I guess it ain't heat back up all the way yet. But I don't know if it was hotter than the day before or what. But it's cold to me a little bit. <laughs> I'm not used to this. So we have to press it in the cold a little bit. But it started warming up as we start going. But we stand in the hotel, so now your day is full. You had a long day. You're getting up breakfast probably around 6.30, 7. And now you automatically start from right around 8. So, okay, you might have meetings at 8. You might go meetings for a couple hours, and you have practice. Then you go to lunch right around 12 to 1. Then you come back, you might have more meetings for the rest of the day. And this might be the day you don't have another walkthrough. You always have either, you always have a practice and a walkthrough or a practice and weights. So every day is going to be either one. So, and always meetings, you're always going to be in meetings. So you're going to really be going right around eight to about 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the day you might have a little, Hour break in there to just relax, take a little nap, maybe. But for the most part, that's your schedule for. Luckily, in the CFL, it's only two weeks before you start playing playing preseason games, and yeah. then you play two preseason games. So make it through the rough part of camp. And now we're on to the preseason games. First preseason game comes. <laughs> the first preseason game comes. Um, don't really get into, what, the second half of the game. But I play well. I play well for the most part. And I scored a game with a touchdown, you know. So I had two catches for 99 yards and a game with a touchdown in the first preseason game. So it's pretty – things are starting to look up. And then after you after that, next thing you know, I just take off in practice, um, practicing well, got making a lot of noise in practice and just bringing a lot of attention to my name, like, Hey, who is this guy? Really just bringing attention to my name or whatever. Um, from, from the vets and things like that. Like, oh, hey, man, you good job. You know, all the guys start to know that the guys have been playing up for a little while because once you've been in the league for a little while, you don't really pay attention to the young guys on this. they really just making plays and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, really making noise. It's like, oh, man, we see guys come in too much. It's just, it's just how they, that's just part of the process of the game. Oh, we had a guy come in just for one week and was out. Like it happens like that sometimes. Like so, it's like it makes sense why at that time I'm looking like, oh, okay, yeah, they making noise. Like yeah, they basically telling who's gonna make the team. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So going to the second preseason game, we really didn't get too much playing time. So it's really hard to really make a team you don't get too much playing time. You don't have, you don't have no plays and things like that. You have to obviously be able to produce for them to select who they want on the team. But they kind of always know what, who they want in a sense, in a way. Um, but you – certain guys, like I guess myself, I came out of nowhere and just boom, pop on the scene. And they're saying, we're going – you know, we're going – we like him, but I still had to wait my time because they put me on practice squad, you know? Yeah. Still put me on practice squad, even though I'm still – I'm doing better than a lot of guys here, but it, it don't – you know, it, it's not always about that. It's about understanding, like I said, the respect from the coaches. Like, you have to, under, they have to trust you because they're putting their job on the line, putting me out there if I don't know what I'm doing. So yeah. I had to earn that trust and had to show them that, yes, this guy knows what he's doing. And that comes with time sometimes. And then you have to earn the quarterback's trust, your teammates' trust, and stuff like that as well. So I understood that. So now I'm just don't get it wrong, don't get it wrong. I did not like it because I knew I was better. You know, it was just you just know when you see sometimes. But um, I was so, like, okay, I'm just continue to work, continue to work. The 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 guy that was starting in front of you, he he gets hurt. No, you know so. It's similar. Somebody did get hurt, but the guy that was starting in front of me didn't get hurt. So pretty much the guy that was starting at the position beside me got hurt. So they moved the guy in front of me to that position, and then I I moved up, and it was all she wrote after that. Yeah. So you go from practice squad, somebody uh, getting hurt, they move the guy, they bring you up, you in a season. Playing 12 games, only yep. 10 starts, 89 catches, 1,110 yards, and six TDs, and wins, which is a Edmonton rookie record, and mm-hmm. win 2015 Outstanding Rookie in the CFL. Yes, sir. At that point, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at that point, do you feel like everything you went through has done paid off? Uh. I wouldn't say everything, but I would say a lot of which, because you always continue to desire more. So mm-hmm. I would say it, it was a point in my life where I, I was very, very happy and everything was falling into place. And you really start to reap. I really start to see me reap the hard work that I put in and the patience start to pay off and all those things. Because that, that's really, looking back, that's really, 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 really was a special, special year all put together. Everything came together that year, top to bottom. Top to bottom, it's crazy. And from that point, you you didn't stop. Like so, I'm gonna kind of just go over some stats that what I seen kind of. When I looked when I looked at it, I was like, damn, like he don't look that big. But now mm-hmm. he talk about, you know, going through scout team, getting hit, and all that other stuff. So right. I'm looking at all your yak yards. Right, right, like, right. You got a lot of yak. Like, you getting yeah. hit a lot of times and taking that ball and keep going. So, we go, in 2015, you had 110, 1,110 yards. Mm-hmm. 2016, you come out with 1,589 yards, 662 mm-hmm. yards worth of yak, mm-hmm. 10 TDs. 2017, did you get you get hurt in 17? No, 17, I came from Tampa. I played a couple games. I got couple, I got released from Tampa in, in 2017. Oh, that's I with Tampa. Yeah. Then Matter I came fact, back only played a few games. Matter of fact, you was on hard knock, right? Yeah. That's when you hard, hard knock. knock. You should have mm-hmm. made that fucking team. Who like, you tell Who you tell Like, I'm hey, watching. I, if I get to talking about that, that's why I told you, man. It's hard shit, dog. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's, that's the politics, it, it, man. It's every time. It's every time. Every time I'm there, ping, ping, ping. So I know something great coming. It's okay, though. Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk about the Tampa experience. How was that? In, in- oh, man, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a great experience, man. It was a great experience. I was around my college teammate again, Mike Evans, man. So we was hanging out enjoying it, man. I actually learned a lot in that process. I learned so much. It was a, we had our, our coach and receiver. He was a great coach, man. Uh, on your butt, regardless. Don't coach the top and bottom. I learned a lot about hand placement and just, just, I learned, I, I learned a lot about football in Tampa in general, because he asked me the time 
to really teach you. I learned a lot about coverages and how to read the safeties a little bit more and a whole bunch, man. So it really, even though things didn't work out, man, it was a, a great learning experience for me, man. Even, and, I, and speaking on experience, man, I tell you, man, I didn't lose too many one-on-ones at all, man. I really was out there doing my thing. I would say, but it was just one of the things where it's like, when I signed, okay, they had Mike Evans and Adam Humphreys legit as the two receivers that's really over there. You know what I'm saying? Then after I signed, okay, they signed DJ. You know what I'm saying? They signed Deshaun Jackson probably right at literally a little bit after I signed. They could have told me or whatever, but it's business. They signed Deshaun Jackson. And then now that I report the for count, the draft pick they got, they got Chris Gowan. Yeah. yeah. They draft him third round, he's going to play. That's four guys now, you know? Mm-hmm. Which the odds are starting to look, you know, a little more scarce now because they got four guys that's guaranteed from start. Now it's, I got a battle between 12 other guys for one spot because there's only five that's going to play and travel. You understand? Yeah. So that's just how it goes because it's a number game. And then on top of that, you got favoritism towards a couple other guys, you know, that you're familiar with because they've been in your system before. Right. Which, that's just the way it is. That's yeah. oh, sure. I know him. He played for me when I was in Atlanta. Like oh, that's just how I go, you know. So now I'm getting, uh, I have to learn a whole new playbook and things along the line anyway, you know. But definitely, I feel like I definitely should have made that team for sure, without a doubt. It's just, like you say, can't control some things. Politics falls in place accordingly sometimes. But I feel like I had a, a, a great camp there. I feel like I did, I did well. And I'm like, damn, they could at least sign up the practice squad or something. Yeah, you know, a lot, of people, <laughs> a lot of people don't realize, man, there's a fine line between somebody that's in the NBA or NFL versus somebody in the CFL. And playing overseas basketball, there's a like, it's, not, it's 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 like a it's like a hair, like it's such such a it's such a fine line, man. And people always think, oh, I'm gonna go to college, I can just go to the CFL, I can go overseas and play. Now it don't work like that mm-hmm. because that shit is hard. You know, I've seen it. You know, we've seen you through your process. Now hearing, now actually hearing the inside of your process, mm-hmm. uh, seeing Mike with his process. That shit is hard, man. Like, you just – yeah. and both of y'all should be in y'all respective leagues. You know what I'm saying? Should be in y'all respective leagues because y'all put the work in, y'all, and then y'all showed up. But, like you say, it's the politics of the whole situation, and people just don't get it, man. Like, as an agent, I have people calling me all the time talking about – Oh, I'm gonna go overseas. Well, did you, mm-hmm. did you finish college? No, nah, man, I'm tired of college. I ain't getting no money. But well, you're not gonna get no money overseas. You know, you right, like, sure. it, 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 like put some respect on the game. And I like your approach to the game because a lot of guys like the game owe them something. And here you are, somebody that know he should have made the team. And you sitting here saying, I'm gonna be all right. I know some good coming. He's gonna keep fighting. A lot oh, of guys, man, a lot of guys don't do that. Yeah. A lot of guys don't do that, man. Yeah. Not too, man. I just, I just, honestly, man, I try to find something, a better way to train every year. I try to switch my training up every year to go a little harder. Yeah. You know? That's all I can't control is the work I put in, man. That's it, for real. And the one thing in, in, in looking at, you know, uh, following your stats and everything, like it shows, like your numbers, you're, I mean, you're putting up damn great numbers. But mm-hmm. it's not like, it's not like you just, over there on the team playing. Like, you over there balling out. All-star games, all-star teams. Each time you you, on, you out there. Uh, this last season, I was I was looking up the, before I talked to you, I was looking up trying to see where you was at. And everything I kept seeing was, like, all these teams, like, amazed that you hadn't signed yet. They were, like, right, right. Trying, trying to get you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this dude's, like, one of the most sought-after sought after players out there. And I ain't going to, you know, we ain't going to talk about right. no money like that, but Apparently, you want to hide pay people out there that it's not. Yeah, man, they, man, <laughs> yeah, man. I got, I got a little, got a little weight on my name, man. No, you know? no. But, uh, they re- got a little respect on my name up there, man. But no, man. All, all jokes aside, man, it's it's a very fun league to play, and I enjoyed it. Um, and like you were saying, yeah, I, I have had some some 
some some teams reach out to me, but man, for the most part, man, I would just I didn't get the offer I liked or the offer I felt like I was I was old, so mm. I would just hang it out and see what else was gonna pop up, you know. But um, still, you see, obviously, the CFL everything. Obviously, the season got canceled for the year, and they're gonna start things up next year. So it 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 helped me out greatly that I'm not stuck in the contract and gotta ask them for permission to get out, like a lot of guys might have to and do. And, right. and they're not paying guys their fees, so they're not paying guys what they owe them. So a lot of guys are stuck in a bond. It's been a it's been a tough, tough process for a lot of guys that I know for sure. Yeah. yeah. So what's what's what what's the future for you? What what you got in sight? Uh, inside right now, man. I'm just getting back to training. Took a little time off, getting back to training, getting my body back right, getting in shape, which I had been training all year. And then as of recently until I found out, like, TFL was pretty much canceled in a sense. You know, I was just staying ready just in case, but um, still having hopes and dreams for the NFL and things like that as well. So right now I'm just going to continue to work out, train, um, pray that my uh, my agent gets me some workouts with teams and I can fall off in somewhere and, you know, make some noise, man. That's that's really what's, what I got going right now, man. Figuring, trying to figure it out and just, just – Praying for it and being ready when the opportunity pops up. Yeah. Do you do you um let me ask you a question. So with the whole COVID nineteen, you know, you playing at A and M uh as a as a student athlete, if you if you was in that position with some of those players in right now, some opting out some to play uh during this the time. Uh, what, what what which would you choose? Would you play? Would you put it on the line and play, or would you Hopped out to kind of see. Uh, looking at my thinking, thinking about my my perspective at that time, I probably would play. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like football was everything. Yeah, you know. So at that looking now, I would. It'd be more of a decision for me now, put it like that, than it would then. Then I'd be like, no. Nah. You know, <laughs> that's just how it was. Now I'd be like, man, let me think about it a little bit. Um, let me think about it for a little while, you know, because obviously I trust my body and try to feel it the right way. So all yeah. them stuff like that won't, you know, occur. But that's another another story. But, um, yeah, man, I, I, I just, for the most part, I just hope they choose wisely in their decisions, you know, on what they want to do. It's 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 tough though, man. This is a tough year for a lot of people because it's like high school didn't get to finish what they wanted to finish. You know, they didn't get to end their school year off right. So the seniors coming out really missed a lot, and then you got the freshmen going to college really missing out on a lot as well too. So it's it's tough. That, that that's tough. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just one of the decisions that they feel comfortable with. Go with it. Yeah, I feel I feel like we missed a whole year. You know, like with my with my clients, it's like, you know, everybody got sent home because of COVID. Right. And you know, you know, you got the guys that's riding the cups and making the league and everything is is the NBA had to push all the stuff, you know, push it all back or push it all forward, however you wanna look at it. And they're not even talking about when they're gonna do like the those type of workouts to give guys opportunity. Right. Uh, and it's, it's it's one of those and nobody's seeing that. And internationally, you got a few you got a few places that's opening up, but you don't want to send your client somewhere where they're not doing the proper COVID protocol. Right. So we for know sure. we know over there they they got in some places in Europe they got hit pretty hard, and uh, you know you just don't want to do that. You know if I if I'm talking to somebody and they say, yeah man he just got to come to quarantine for 14 days and and that's it that's it we're not we're not even gonna do a test we're not doing daily testing for the for the players is, is going to be around each other? You know, what kind of environment have you created? And so I've been real skeptical about even trying to send somebody overseas right now because right. of that. You know, and that I'm, makes sense, though. That makes sense because obviously you don't want to jeopardize what nobody else got going on. You want to make sure that the proper plans are set in place yeah, for absolutely. everybody to do what they got to do, you know. So, uh, which, which, like, like I was saying, I think they just started allowing guys, as far as the NFL, to have workouts just literally not too long ago. So for guys like me, 
they just literally opened that up like probably a couple of weeks ago, you know. So what's the process of that? You know, you probably gotta go. It's two day. I think it's a two day process before you even can get the truck to work out with the team. Yeah. You know, they got proper plan in place. As long as you got the proper procedure and plans in place, I feel like you'll be okay. Because obviously, it's tough if you bring guys in working out and they surround, they getting surrounded by your coaches and you working out. Excuse me. Each and every week, that adds up. Oh, you yeah. get a lot of guys mixing and coming across each other there. Mm-hmm. You know, so you gotta have a proper plan in place. Regardless. Yeah, and, and, you know, you gotta make sure your facility is staying clean. Yeah, y'all, you exactly. in the same locker room, exactly. same, all that. It's 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 a lot logistically, man, and 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 that's why I've been telling, you know, I have guys to say, oh, I saw so and so in here, so and so. Okay, cool. He probably not. They probably not even gonna play. You know right. what I mean? They probably not even gonna play. He he might be there, but he they probably not gonna play because the what these teams do, they'll start bringing these guys in, and then but the government haven't haven't told them, hey yeah y'all we free y'all free to do sports. They got the guys there just in case. Right. Yeah, you know, I can't. I, I told my guy, I can't. I'm not gonna have you go out there and sit for 15 days and not make no yeah, money. Just be out there. Yeah. 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 yeah because cause what happens if they shut the whole thing down again? You went out there for no reason. And you went out there for, like, it's just... Yeah. That's a hassle. Yeah. You got to prove and pull out all kind of documents. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. (laughs) So, Darrell, to close it out, man, um, like, we all all come from Hillsborough. We know what it's like coming Mm -hmm. from a small town uh, where it's pretty much, there's not a lot of stuff for us to do, get in trouble. Right, right, for sure. A lot 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 of great athletes in my time. Uh, get in trouble and fall to the wayside. Right, right. A lot of D one athletes that that didn't make it um, due to uh, circumstances. So, g- from from where we come from to where you at right now, what would you say to the younger generation coming up that aspire to uh, not only not only uh, play sports but also to go to college, get them a degree? What right. what, what kind of advice would you give them right now? Uh, just to figure out where they want to go. You know, set a plan for themselves. You feel? You understand? So set a plan. Figure out what they want to do. Set a plan and see that. And just know that they can do really whatever they want as long as they set that plan and follow follow the steps to get there. Create steps to get there. Because anything is attainable, I, I believe. Um, it's just what you put your mind to. Uh, I would never throw no limit or any that on anyone because I just feel like whatever that person want to do, if it's in their heart to do it, they're going to do it. Regardless, just make sure if you want to succeed, it's all preparation. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all preparation. But coming from where we're from, man, it's just, just knowing, for one, you're bigger than sports anyway. It's about your, it's about your the education. It's about the knowledge that you retain, you know. And self-education is great as well. It's, that's one of the best. <laughs> that's why I can't say I learned the majority of what I know, but – um, you know how public school is, but yeah, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have that conversation later on, yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, but I just you know, come from where we from and just figure out what you want out of life and go get that. You want to play sports, use it as a tool, use it as a tool to achieve what you want. If you into computers. Use that as a tool to achieve what you want. You know, you just absolutely use it all. Use it, use it all. Lay, lay, start a foundation. Use it. As, use it as foundation to get you what you want out of life. You know, because think about it. Football. You playing college football for something. They're getting something from you. They're receiving something from you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so <clears throat> if we uh, oh, that's it really. If we if we went to your car right now and turned your car on, what you listening to? Music wise, yeah, well, I'm listening to man, I've been on that ride wave a lot lately, man. I've been on that ride wave. They call my favorite. They call my favorite artist. I've been on that ride wave a lot lately. Um, what else, man? Um, really, man, I listen to a little bit of everything, honestly. But lately, I've been on that ride wave. <laughs> gotcha. Ride wave. What you listen, what you listen to before the game? You said what well, listen to before the game? Yeah. Really, it just depends. I don't really listen to nobody specific. It's mostly like whatever is popping at that time. 
yeah. you know, like what else popping at that time. I don't really revert back to anything. I'm not really superstitious. It's I'm a pop up to the game. This how we gonna go. I just need something to get me right right now. Um, it just depends on how I guess we say it just depends on how I'm feeling that day. Cause sometimes I listen to something slow. <laughs> 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 I listen to something slow. It don't it don't even matter. That's when you throw your James. Zero or something on and just go out there and just, uh, just chill, man. You know. And I always gotta be get ready to go crazy, be animalistic out there. <laughs> so that's how I get sometimes. Hey man, we we really appreciate you coming on, man. I, I want to say definitely, uh, we proud of you, man. I remember when you was walking around, knee high from a grass high with that nappy ass hair. Man, what happened? Upper bars and this. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta know you ain't gonna tell one of those stories, boy. Hey, I'm trying to tell you, man. Hey, I already know. I, <laughs> I know big no. <laughs> Hey, yeah, man. hey man, I appreciate it, man. It's been a beautiful journey, man. I'm ready just to continue to excel, man. Just continue to see the growth and really get out in the community soon. And he was better and be able to do some things, man. That's that's the plan. No, absolutely. Get, it, get out there and get ready, get ready to set some things out there in place for the for the youth and the community. That's hopefully true. in the future. So let us know, man. Yeah, yeah, let us know. For sure. Yeah, man, for sure. Most definitely. All right, man. Appreciate you, man. Right, man, appreciate it, man. Cheers, Much love, y'all, boys. Good luck, man. Thank y'all for having me. Appreciate it. All right.